Legislative Consent Motion on Cultural Property Armed Forces Armed Conflicts Bill. I will ask the clerk to read the motion. That this Assembly endorses the principle of the extension to Northern Ireland of the Cultural Property Armed Conflicts Bill. Thank you. I call the Minister for Communities. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move. Uh, as members will be aware from the memorandum that was laid in the Assembly on the 5th of September, I am seeking the Assembly's approval uh, for a legislative consent motion to enable Northern Ireland to be included in the UK Cultural Property Armed Conflicts Bill. The Cultural Property Bill is being proposed by the Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport and was introduced in Westminster on the 19th of May. It is currently expected to complete its passage in early 2017, although this of course may be subject to change. Uh, the bill is designed to enable the UK to ratify the 1954 Hague Convention and related protocols for the protection of cultural property in the event of armed conflict. The 1954 Hague Convention provides for a system of general and special protection of cultural property in situations of international and non-international armed conflict. Under the Convention, cultural property designated for protection bears a white and royal blue shield symbol. Uh, this carries the same protective status as the Red Cross and Red Crescent. Uh, securing a legislative consent motion for the Cultural Property Bill will permit the Westminster Government to confer a, po uh, a power upon the local minister with responsibility uh, for culture and the historic environment in Northern Ireland, currently myself, to grant permission for the use of this protective emblem here. It will also enable me as Minister to designate individuals who are entitled to use the emblem as a means of identification in Northern Ireland. Cultural property that may be protected is that deemed to be of great importance to cultural heritage generally. In Northern Ireland, it is likely to include historical monuments in state care, high-grade listed buildings, uh, archives, art and other exhibits under the care of national museums, uh, the Public Record Office for Northern Ireland and Historic Environment Division, amongst others. It can also include works of art, archaeological sites, scientific collections and other significant uh, materials. However, there is no requirement that the emblem be displayed on all structures associated with the Convention. It will only be mandatory in regard to structures given enhanced protection. This is expected to be very few across the United Kingdom. Criteria for the use of the emblem and the way the scheme operates is intended to be consistent across the United Kingdom. Uh, DCMS has started to work through the details of what the exact policy and criteria will be for using the emblem on cultural property, as well as how it will come into operation. Uh, DCMS has confirmed that all of the devolved administrations and the relevant agencies and bodies will be fully involved in the development of this policy and related criteria setting out exactly when the emblem should be used. As Minister, I am strongly supportive of the scheme. I believe that it will help provide additional protection uh, for Northern Ireland's important and highly valued cultural and heritage assets, both now and into the future. I also welcome the wide definition of cultural property, which forms part of the Hague Convention and is recognised in the Bill. If the Assembly Mr. Speaker, does not approve uh, this legislative consent motion, the Bill will proceed and it will be the Minister for Culture, Media and Sport in Westminster uh, who will retain all powers in relation to use of the cultural emblem in Northern Ireland. Agreeing to approve this legislative consent motion will ensure that local interests are represented in the operation of the Cultural Property Bill, and on that basis I would ask members to support the proposal. Well, the Chair of the Communities Committee, Mr Colum Eastwood. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and thank the, the Minister for bringing uh, this forward today. Subsequent to the end of the, the Second World War and the massive destruction incurred across Europe uh, as a result, the Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the Event of Armed Conflict was adopted at The Hague in May 1954. The aim of the Convention was to seek to afford protection to immovable and movable cultural heritage, for example, architectural monuments, works of art, books, manuscripts, uh, arch archaeological sites, uh, etc. Uh, the Convention is comprised of two protocols. Uh, the first protocol, agreed in 1954, details the undertakings for the protection of cultural property and territory occupied during the, an armed conflict. Uh, the second protocol essentially enhances the protection 
afforded to cultural heritage, establishes uh, offences for violation of the protocol, and provides clarification and obligations to the Convention. Uh, the British Government signed the Convention in 1954, uh, but despite committing to ratify the Convention, successive British Governments have failed to do so. Uh, the Committee for Communities welcomes the mm -hmm. Cultural Property Bill, uh, which is designed to enable the UK to ratify the 1954 Hague Convention for the protection of cultural property in the event of armed conflict uh, and accede uh, to its two protocols. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the Committee believes that the provision, provisions of the Bill would be a positive development towards uh, the protection of our cultural heritage. The impact of armed conflict on cultural property can be devastating and the Committee recognises that the marking of cultural property with a distinctive emblem uh, for, of the Convention uh, may afford some protection to these properties. The Committee therefore welcomes the British Government's decision to ratify uh, the Convention uh, through the Bill. Uh, to that extent, the, the Committee also welcomes the introduction of offences designed to protect cultural property in the event of an armed conflict, as well as uh, those to deter uh, misuse of the Blue Shield. The Committee notes the, the wide definition of cultural property under Article 1 of the Convention uh, and it's in included in the Westminster Bill. Uh, the Committee, of having sought clarification from the Department, was satisfied with the rationale for using an LCM rather than an Assembly Bill. Uh, as well as cultural matters, the Westminster Bill contains provisions which mainly concern the import and export of cultural property to and from uh, the UK. While these apply to Northern Ireland, they are not devolved matters under the Northern Ireland Act 1998 and hence are outside the legislative competence uh, of this Assembly. The Committee is content uh, that it would not be possible, therefore, to bring forward provisions by means of an Assembly Bill. Uh, the Committee notes the, that the inclusion of Northern Ireland in the Bill will ensure consistency and coherence across the UK, uh, noting that both uh, Wales and Scotland have agreed the same approach. Uh, should the Assembly not pass the LCM, then the Bill would need to be amended to allow the British Minister to grant permission and to make designations in relation to the use of the emblem uh, in Northern Ireland. Uh, the Committee agrees that it is preferable uh, that the Bill as drafted will confer powers on the Department of Communities here in relation to the use of the emblem in Northern Ireland, and the local minister uh, will be able to be in a position to influence the operation of legislation as it relates uh, to the North of Ireland. Uh, the Committee is satisfied that the original consultation undertaken by the Department of Culture, Media and Sport in 2008 is still relevant and ap applicable uh, and is content with the assessment that financial impact, uh, the financial impact is expected to be uh, minimal. Uh, the, the Committee is also satisfied with the Department of Communities' assessment that the extension to Northern Ireland of the relevant provisions contained in the Bill has no implications for equality of opportunity, nor will it have an impact on the cultural capital of Northern Ireland. Uh, crucially, Mr. Speaker, the Committee notes that the British Government will need to develop criteria in order to, to identify cultural property within the meaning of Article 1 of the Convention. That is a movable or immo immovable property of great importance to the cultural heritage of every people. Uh, the Department of Culture, Media and Sport have confirmed that all devolved administrations will be fully involved in the development of criteria and the Committee for Communities would ask the Minister keep us apprised of progress in this regard. Uh, the Committee recommends that the Assembly endorses uh, the principle of the extension to Northern Ireland of the Cultural Property Bill. Thank you. Call Mr Andy Allen. In the early 1990s, the Balkan Wars in the former Yugoslavia saw events such as the destruction of the iconic Mostar Bridge and the shelling of the historic old building of Dubrovnik. These were its reminder, a terrible reminder, that destruction of cultural heritage is a tactic of a war that has not been consigned to history. The 1954 Hague Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the event of armed conflict was result, and as March 2016, it's been ratified by 127 states. Mr. Speaker, as somebody who served in the British Armed Forces and proudly served there, I know only too well um, the duty of care, the professionalism and, and the training given to members of the Armed Forces to ensure that a duty of care is afforded to cultural property and we do all we can that they're not caught up in conflicts or destroyed as such. However, events throughout history will, will tell us and prove that there's others who do not take such approach. So that is why we therefore support this LCM in affording cultural protection to uh, monuments, arts um, and, and other uh, 
items of cultural significance throughout Northern Ireland. We support the LCM, Mr. Speaker. Call Mr. Christopher Stalford. Um, I think the committee chairman has given a, a very fair uh, assessment of the position that the committee has adopted. Earlier today, Mr. Speaker, we talked about Syria. Uh, in Palmyra, in Syria, we have all seen a, a dreadful example of what can happen where significant cultural and architectural property is not afforded protection. Um, ruins of an ancient civilization that have survived thousands of years. Uh, and inspired awe and admiration from all who visited them, destroyed in a few seconds by terrorists armed with explosives. And so it's in that regard that the failure of successive governments to implement the 1954 Hague Convention um, should be addressed. I'm glad that the Department for Culture, Media and Sports has recognised the need for the preservation of our heritage. Whilst I agree with the Minister that uh, there can only be uh, certain circumstances in which the blue and white shield symbol uh, can be deployed, I actually hope that in time, when the system is rolled out, um, once the, 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 the bill is passed, when the system is rolled out, actually the possession of the white and blue shield on uh, a facility will become a badge of honour. And it says that this is something that the government recognises as being significant and worthy of preservation. Ultimately, Mr. Speaker, of course, um, it is highly unlikely, or it is to be hoped, it is highly unlikely uh, that Northern Ireland will ever again be affected by circumstances where our um, <coughs> monuments, art, archives, etc., would ever be in a position uh, to be threatened. But I welcome the fact that uh, almost 60 years, more than 60 years after the Hague Convention, um, the government at Westminster and our own local government is taking action to ensure its effective implementation. And so I support the legislative consent motion, Mr. Speaker. Well, Ms. Carol McQuillan. Gormelgut, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, and I too support the CLCM. I'd like to declare an interest. I was one of four, maybe five ministers, to try to bring this forward. Um, I suppose you know, there's many accusations levelled at this place in terms of things moving slowly, but from 1954, I mean, this one's not on our watch, in fairness. Um, there have been attempts from 2007 right through to 2008 uh, to have this ratified. I think it's really important. I mean, the chair, in fairness, summed up exactly what was discussed in the committee and laid out, laid out very clearly our understanding and indeed our acknowledgement of the need for this LCM to be brought forward. Uh, I mean, Article it has been mentioned, Article 1 and its definition is very wide in terms of cultural property. But I am uh, delighted that the clarification that we sought has been granted, and indeed it all devolved administrations and institutions will be responsible for its designation. Uh, as the Minister said in his opening remarks, it, it is going through passage in Westminster. If any changes do, uh, or will, if any changes are made, I would anticipate that they are brought forward to us. I also would expect, um, and it, it's not in the bill in any great detail, although it's, it's the inferences there, that when cultural property is seized, that it's returned as well, because we also have instances where that has happened in the past. And indeed, as part of many conflict resolution, it's also uh, a very uh, important part for any conflict resolution to have property brought forward uh, and granted as well. The designation is really important. The symbol is really important. It gives it the status, as mentioned previously, with the Red Cross and the Red Crescent. Uh, and I believe that even just going through scrutiny, as we anticipate through this mandate and indeed mandates ahead, that this is something I believe will be given attention to the Department of the Communities. We support this LCM. Mrs. Naomi Law. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, and on behalf of the Alliance Party, I also uh, want to welcome um, the opportunity to speak um, about the legislative 
the legislative consent motion. Um, as the chair of the committee has already set out, um, the committee's community has welcomed the fact that the British government is now ratifying the 1954 Hague Convention earlier this year and also supporting the fact that a legislative consent motion is the most sensible way um, for us in Northern Ireland um, to deal with this matter and also to allow some of those powers to be, evolved, to be devolved um, to the Assembly locally um, in order that our own um, cultural heritage and um, property can be protected. The Hague Convention itself is broken into two protocols, the first emphasising the protection of cultural property in the territory occupied dur during an armed conflict, the second strengthening the first by establishing offences for violations of Protocol 1 and clarifying obligations. Cultural property itself is a very wide-ranging term, however, the Bill is not controversial in its aims or definitions of cultural items. It outlines that seeking to protect immovable and movable items which possess significant cultural heritage to an area will be an offence. Mr Speaker, this can include things, for example, like architectural monuments, works of art, books, manuscripts, and also the damage that can be committed to archaeological sites, all of which can add value um, to a region and enrich it. In a globalised world which is experiencing significant civil unrest and cultural violence, it is important um, that we are strong against the theft of cultural property um, from other nations. Um, and so, as others have reflected, as we talk about Aleppo and Syria today, we also think of Palmyra and the destruction uh, which has been carried out um, on ancient civilization. Um, uh, relics that have been there for many thousands of years um, and yet have been destroyed in the most wanton display um, of cultural um, destruction that we have seen in some considerable time. It is good um, that whilst we in this chamber will be largely powerless in preventing such actions during a war, the bill itself is a positive step in reducing the potential um, for the pillage of items from places such as that and permitting them to be sold on in the black market for profit. And that is something which I think is hugely important. It's also good, Mr Speaker, in that it allows our cultural heritage locally also to be protected and recognised. Whilst we would hope um, that Northern Ireland will never become a war zone under the Hague Convention, um, it is a sensible precaution that we should identify those matters which are of cultural significance, not just for us regionally but internationally, um, and give those due protection, not just from, from war, um, but also in giving them status um, on an international footing. And so I think the opportunity to do that um, is, is hugely important. So, Mr Speaker, we are happy to support um, this as a way of protecting items and monuments which have special importance in terms of the present preservation of cultures, both local and globally. We do live in an increasingly interconnected and globalised world, and by supporting this bill, we can support and develop a global community of different cultures for all people at a time when there is increasing instability around the world. Thank you. Call the Minister for Communities, Mr Paul Given, to conclude and wind up on the, deb the debate on the motion. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Chairman of the Committee uh, for Communities and, and members of that committee and indeed this House who have uh, made their contributions uh, this afternoon. And uh, obviously, just a couple of points were raised. One was if I would continue to commit the, the committee appraised of developments, happy to do that. The exact criteria in terms of how this is going to apply here in Northern Ireland is being developed by the uh, DCMS and obviously uh, my department has a, a role in that, uh, and I'll be happy to keep members informed as uh, developments make progress. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, the question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it.